Adventure is calling. A dream to ride across open plains. A thirst for climbing mountain passes. A hunger for endless ribbons of asphalt. You need to explore the great outdoors on two wheels. And there are so many motorcycles that can take you there. From sophisticated ADVs to dirt bikes with lights. The options are nearly unlimited. However, there's one big problem. You are a cheapskate. Worse yet, you're a discerning cheapskate, so you will not have any used motorcycle in your garage. You want a brand new motorcycle, a fresh odometer, and a fresh warranty, and you will not pay more than $5,000. And if that's the case, you should be looking at either the Royal Enfield Himalayan or the CSC RX4. So buckle up, my frugal friends, because we're taking these bikes to the top of those mountains to see which one breaks first. Or to see which one of us breaks first. Oh, I hope not. I don't want to break. I don't want to break either, <laughs> but we'll see. Nobody's sure. <laughs> really don't want to break. To get to that thar snowy peak in the distance, I have chosen the Royal Enfield Himalayan. It is a 411cc air-cooled single cylinder engine, and it is wrapped up in approximately 1,000 years of pedigree <laughs> and heritage. If you don't know about Royal Enfield, they've been making bikes since 1901, so that's, yeah, about a thousand years. <laughs> it also has um, knobbly tires, a 21-inch front wheel for trotting down dirt paths, and some wind protection for cruising down the freeway. So it is clearly the best cheapskate adventure bike. Unlike Aries Machine, he has made a terrible mistake, I'm afraid. This guy's all proud of his pedigree, but I don't give a crap about that, buddy. I have features. The CSC <laughs> has a 450cc liquid-cooled engine, so more technology and more displacement. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Pretty much adjustable everything, whether it's my brake lever or my windscreen or my suspension. And it also has this three-piece luggage kit that is included in the base price of $4,995. However, I did step over the $5,000 price tag because I got the $45 ABS switch because I want more adjustability. So as seen here, sitting at $5,040. That does bring me to some bad news about the Himalayan, actually, because in order to avoid hotels and restaurants, because we're cheapskates, we had to lash all our camping gear to these bikes, and I had to splurge on these lovely top-loading aluminum saddlebags, which cost $700 approximately. So despite the lower base price on the Himalayan of $4,750, as it sits, about $5,500. And you call yourself frugal. Yeah, I know. Well, okay, the true test is gonna be who gets to the top of the mountain with the least dollars in damage. And I noticed Mr. Henning already busted his mirror just getting to this campsite. <laughs> ah, f me! You can always trust a friend to point out your failures. <laughs> I did fall down, I had a little boo boo, but I looked it up. It's like 22 bucks for a new mirror, so 5,062. I still very much like my chances. Okay. And the, uh, the brush guard and the side panel thing? Oh, that's, that's like ADV bike patina. You can't even pay for that, <laughs> okay, actually. Right, that's that's custom. <laughs> <laughs> the idea was to test the bikes on about 200 miles of off-road riding over the course of two days. With about 60 pounds of equipment strapped to the bikes, we set out across the high desert and aimed for the even higher mountains in the distance. Naturally, we kick things off with a nice, mellow downhill. Oh my god! Oh god, there's so much stuff dragging. Oh, I don't like my odds here. Not really riding so much as kind of walking this motorcycle down. Okay, okay. Also, ABS switches. ABS switches off, but ABS is still, still active, so maybe that $45 wasn't well spent. <laughs> The Royal Enfield has 8.6 inches of ground clearance. The CSC, 8.1. In other words, not enough for this particular trail. Good thing we are so good at this. Oh, God damn it. Can we not get out this way? What's up? Can we not get out this way? We're gonna have to go back up. Oh my god! Oh. If the if the cameraman knew that, I'm gonna tear his head off. That might not work. I'll spare you from watching this in real time, but the takeaway is that the RX4's grabby clutch and street tires weren't working for me. Meanwhile, the Himalayan's low seat height and tractor-like engine made Zach look like an old pro. Not a great start for Team CSC. I 
I don't think I've ever ridden a motorcycle off-road that required me to ski my boots so much. Outriggers out for safety. Not super flattering, that's for sure. It's not flattering at all. It's <laughs> embarrassing. I can't believe this video is going to go on YouTube. People are going to make fun of me. <laughs> he knows what he's doing, everybody. Promise. He just doesn't have a trusty little Himalayan burrow. And I'd like to think that maybe, you know, aggressive tires would make it better, but what aggressive tires would not fix is the super abrupt throttle response and then the, the crappy clutch engagement. It's just, anytime you need finesse or control, it's just not there. It's Honestly, it's pretty difficult to ride, <laughs> point in case. <laughs> the Enfield is a slow, lopey, basset hound of a motorcycle, but it's very calm and relaxed, you know, like it just trundles along like this. It kind of uh, doesn't seem to care really where you're going as long as you don't have too much urgency in getting there. For a dirt bike, this is a cakewalk. Yeah. But for, for, for a street bike, this is like a little bit tricky. And I think you're starting to see the separation between the bikes a little bit. I'm hoping that the CSC is more of the sport touring type of adventure bike as opposed to the off-road adventure bike because it needs, it needs some sort of redemption at this point. I like this firmer surface. This is more to the CSC's liking. Really beautiful spot too. It's also the fastest we've gone all day, which is nice, <laughs> considering how much we were struggling. In fact, I think it's time to open this bad boy up. Oh, what are you suggesting? I got 450 cc's to play with. I'm suggesting that I'm about to leave you in my dust. Come on, little burro. Come on, little burro. You can do it. Oh, oh. oh. oh no. See ya! We spent a shocking amount of time trying to avoid the sandy hills that surrounded the dry lake bed. And when that didn't work, we decided to go through them. Oh boy, oh boy! That's a lot of ascent. Ah. Last obstacle of the day. Come on, little burro. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, scared that jackrabbit. Oh, it's getting soft. Ah. Come on, our explorer, you got this. <laughs> Come on, hook up. Oh, yes, sir. Ah. <laughs> oh, shit. No! <laughs> Trench out! Oh man! So close! <laughs> Within sight of the top. I'm saying, if I had a knobbier tire, man. If I had a knobbier tire. Yeah, and just a bigger member also. But you know, I'm on a budget. I gotta wear out the stock tires before I'm allowed <laughs> to put TKC 80s on. I mean, this is yeah, some I'll just of the push worst conditions well. for those tires. It's so silty. You ready? Yes, sir. Ah! Oh, I'm sucking on beams. Ah! Sorry. Ah! We're getting come there. On, We're getting on, there. On. All right. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> oh. That's how I'm going to be victorious. I'm just going to wear you out for pushing my bike. Yeah. Day one's been real trying, but we've got the high desert behind us. We're going to get down on the backside into the valley and presumably set up camp. And then the green, earthy, and perhaps snowy peaks in the distance. And those mountains look a lot bigger than the mountains we've already climbed. <laughs> yeah. That boat's poorly for our chances. But it's okay. I've got confidence. survived a very windy night camping and we are ready for day two where we will we promise this time actually get into the mountains we're, we're closer believe it or not 
We did learn a thing or two on day one trundling across that rocky, loose, nasty desert. And what I learned, if I'm honest, is that my friend Ari Henning here, his uh, damage repair bill slowly climbing. Tell oh, the ladies yeah. and gentlemen how Let's much it costs. Let's know about my bill. Okay, so the mirror that I busted, I misquoted it at 22 bucks. Actually only $15, and then the handlebar, which is also bent on account of the multiple right side dirt naps I subjected the bike to. Um, only 48 bucks to replace that. So that is $62 to replace these parts and bring this machine back to showroom condition. That's remarkably affordable. And frankly, I like the bike's chances today because these roads are a lot more hard packed and we're going to elevation where my extra horsepower is probably gonna be an advantage. You've got like a claimed 23. This thing's gonna be gasping for air. <laughs> <laughs> I'll translate for him. What he's trying to say is that the Royal Enfield was unscathed from yesterday's adventure and it did all the things that uh, his bike did with much lower effort. So either I'm a tremendous rider, much better <laughs> than Ari Henning, or it's just easier to ride. I think I know what the answer to that is. Okay. In any case, with a name like Himalayan, you better believe I'm not afraid of a little bit of elevation. After a day in the desert where the mountains refused to get any closer, it felt like we were finally making progress. Man, what a beautiful view. I much prefer this sort of road. Give me something wide, give me something smooth, give me something kind of hard pack. <laughs> the CSC is doing it just fine. I haven't done it any favors by loading it up with all this camping equipment and filling the top box with <laughs> weight. And I also failed to point out my 5.3 gallon fuel tank, which ah. equates to like, you know, 35 pounds of weight pretty high up in the chassis. So the whole it feeling top heavy and uh, wanting to fall over kind of makes sense. It does have some uh, design features that are much more street bikey, you might say. Well, it was not designed in the Himalayas, so. <laughs> This is exactly why you have bikes like this, right? So you can uh, you can get out and get lost because the truth is we know you can do this on an MT-07 if you want to, but it's just not going to be enjoyable and you're going to be worried about damaging it and that kind of thing, but not with these things. Not worried about damage, not considering how cheap replacement parts are for the CSC. <laughs> Here we go, rocket climb. Ugh, gritting my teeth already. This is the terrain of the Himalayans. Trundling along. Oh, gotta slip the clutch. Gearing's kinda tall for this. Ah, focus. Gotta work the clutch on this bike so carefully. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Keep it online. Woo-hoo! Oh, ready! Cleaned it! Cleaned it! <laughs> <laughs> You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Now I can just make fun of you for making up for lost time, it seems. <laughs> I think I got cocky. Yeah. Yikes. Pull that out of there. Well, that Thanks. bit of trail was tough, so I'm not surprised you fell down. But, dude, it is hell on that CSC. <laughs> this is just not what that bike is designed for. We've pushed it a little further than it really needs to go. Ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It's just patina, man. It's just patina. You stand forward, yep. slide it out. Oh. Oh. Okay, that's my fault. <laughs> Okie dokie. I, I will say in the defense of the Royal Enfield, it tipped over pretty hard into this mirror and it's still okay. I think you got lucky, dude. Lucky or, you know, high build quality, whatever. And away he goes on his glorious off-road machine. Guys, I'm getting a little jealous of the Royal Enfield. I'm not going to lie. But I am looking forward to pavement because then the CSC will be worth it. Spoiler alert, we were nowhere near pavement. Worse yet, the trail was about to get seriously steep. Get the ball rolling here, all right. Oh, dragging stuff already. Such a rough, rocky trail. Ugh. 
Jeez, what a mess. Holy crap. What do we do? Like, Maybe we'll camp on the trail tonight. I mean. I think we just tag team it. So you push me and then I push you? Yeah, I think that's the best bet. Otherwise, we're just putting a lot of wear and tear on the bikes. Oh, buddy. Okay. You're my best friend. Did I ever tell you that? <laughs> Good time to pick it up. <laughs> It may only have 23 ponies, and yes, it weighs 430 American pounds before you bury it in luggage. But what the Himalayan lacks in horsepower, it makes up for with pure determination. And durable clutch plates. Now it's time for us to get uh, that orange bike way down the hill, all the way up there. Not looking forward to it. Let's see if all your horsepower helps. It's gonna help throw roots, that's for sure. The CSC has a whopping 42 horsepower, but with street tires and an awful clutch, putting that power to the ground is a challenge. The seat is also tall and it's heavier by about 20 pounds. So if you take it where it doesn't belong, bring a friend to push. This is the price you pay for adventure to a certain extent, am I right? We're not really spreadsheet adventurers, you know? We don't have things planned out all that well. Alrighty, ready? Here we go, final push. Uh, I might be able to get up on the pegs. Ah, it's so hard. Oh my God. Oh no. Woo! Does have horsepower. I'll give it that. So close to the top. First tip over the day for the CSC. Oh my gosh. I give up. It did pretty good work though. You guys saw that, right? There was like a huge rock. I hit it dead on. I literally was just like front end dancing, huge rock right here, went right into it. I could see blue sky underneath both wheels. Nice. So sweet. Cool. I was really hoping to make it to the summit without hitting the deck, but Oh well. The mirror survived. Indeed it did. That's good, that would have been another $15 that I don't want to spend. Lucky for Aerie, the CSC can take a beating. The factory crash bars did their job, so really he just added a little bit more of that ADV patina he loves so much. We were still in good shape to head to the top. Nice view. That's awesome. I don't quite suppose it's gonna get any better than that before the sun sets. <laughs> Man, look at that freaking view. There's nothing quite like an epic panorama to make it feel like you're at the top of a mountain. But we'd had our fill of snow and rocks and we had certainly learned how the bikes work off road. So we took the paved route back to a warmer campsite which meant we finally had a chance to use our cheap ADVs as street bikes. On 
On asphalt, they're both totally adequate, up to about 80 miles an hour anyway. The Himalayan will do everything you ask of it, so long as you don't ask it to go, stop, or turn very quickly. The CSC is faster, with better brakes, a more comfortable riding position, and better wind protection. So, which one do you buy? The lovable tractor from India, or the flawed but featured ride from the Middle Kingdom? The winner, uh, that was yet to be decided. So we woke up this morning, and in the bright light of day, we did a final damage tally on our motorcycles. Now, a little caveat here, Zachary and I have a gentleman's agreement that damage to the crash bars and luggage does not count, because that just happens. Patina. Yeah, it's character. Yeah. Now, all that being said, I have actually not inflicted any more harm on the CSC than I did from the onset, so I still only have a busted mirror and a bent handlebar, both of which should be replaced, but it's only gonna cost me 62 bucks. I mean, come on, how frugal is that? That's awesome. I, on the other hand, broke the side stand spring on the Royal Enfield somehow, uh, and I busted the front brake lever. But the truth is, you could shatter most of the things <laughs> you can see on an RX-4, and it would still come out to less money overall than the Royal Enfield with that aluminum luggage on there. Yeah, and I mean, for once, he's not exaggerating. This is an incredibly <laughs> affordable motorcycle, and it is a much better street bike than it is an off-road bike, because frankly, it shouldn't be on anything more off-road than this dry lake bed here. It's perfectly fast on the highway, and it does a lot of things good, and it does have a lot of features. The problem is, some of those features just they're not good. Like the windscreen adjustability, that's literally the jankiest thing I've ever used. Yep. The ABS switch did not work from the get-go. And I mean, then there's things that aren't adjustable, like the clutch, which is grabby, the throttle, which is abrupt. And those two things combine to make the CSC just more difficult to ride, whether you're on-road or off-road. So I mean, for my hard-earned, diligently pinched pennies, I'm not buying a CSC. I would, however, buy <laughs> The Royal Enfield. Yes, it is dog slow, but it is a more <laughs> functional machine and it is so handsome. I mean, look at it. It's so good looking, right? It might have uh, brakes and a transmission <laughs> and a headlight from 40 or 50 years ago. It does, yeah. <laughs> but it's a nice machine. And I mean, there's something to be said for the millions of reliable miles that are under the belt of Royal Enfields around the world. They're an old company. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And that's probably why it just sort of feels tighter as a package and has better build quality. Another important distinction to make at this point is that these are not dual sport motorcycles. No, 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 not even close. These are small adventure touring motorcycles. If you want to take them on some horrible torture test route through the mountains like we did, you can do that and survive technically. Barely, I would say, it was close. <laughs> but if you want to do that, uh, you know, we want to ride off-road and then a little bit of on-road, frankly, there's better options. There are better options. Yeah, in in fact, fact, yeah, we actually have while one we're at here it, let's just uh, show you guys this thing here. This is a Honda CRF 250L. It is engineered in Japan. It is made in Thailand. It is what our cameraman was riding the whole time, and boy, was he waiting for us off-road. Plus, he skipped down the highway just fine. You can add luggage, and the MSRP is only a little bit more than the bikes that we were riding. So, you know, you could consider that, too, if you're discerning cheapskate. And I, it just, it's a good... Uh, Careful with that, though. That, that I, literally costs more than our motorcycles. Just a good option is what I'm saying. It is so. a good option. And something I was surprised about with these bikes, uh, one of which is made in India, one of which is made in China, is that they're perfectly durable. I had a genuine concern that as soon as we took them off-road, they were just gonna disintegrate and just leave parts all over the trail. But we definitely rode them hard. I did my best, that's for sure. Chucked them at the ground yep. numerous times, took them over rocks, through mud, I mean, through snow over the top of a mountain, and nothing broke that wasn't our fault. I am just really excited that there is growth in the small ADV segment because it's a, it's a cool spot for people to get into. I think we can all agree that more options are always a good thing. Two other things actually that I'd like to add at the yeah. very end. First, I won. This Important guy. distinction. To so make. competitive. And last of all, we are very excited to be back. Yes. So please comment, tell your friends, subscribe, and buckle yourselves up for more motorcycle adventures. Right on. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. I don't ever want to do this again on this bike, but it is doing it. I got distracted by a very large lizard that ran across the trail. It is a 411cc air-cooled liquid. Liquid lubricated. I have no idea why I said liquid. There's nothing to do with liquid except the water in the saddlebag. It's super cool. Though. And the oil. It's really cool. It is cool. Nailed it. We're so good at this. <laughs>